Demons and Devils. That's the title of this message, Demons and Devils. Demons and Devils and their work in the world. Demons and Devils, they are real, by the way. Many people call demons devils. There's only one devil in all reality, but there are many demons and there are many fallen angels, as we know. By the way, I'm teaching uh, Hebrew twice a week now instead of once. <laughs> On uh, Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock at my house and at uh, Highline Missionary Baptist Church and at, on Wednesday up there. I'm going right here at 21, yeah, on this one. And, oh, yes, I'm starting over Genesis 1. And then I'm, on Tuesday afternoon, I'm doing the 17th chapter, I think, of Genesis. So that's more. Yeah, yeah. So I'm starting over again up there because I haven't heard anything. And I'm, I'm finishing out there, just continuing on. And I'm working on the book of Exodus also. So I'm, I don't know how long the Lord's going to leave me here, but I'm staying busy. What do you do on Sunday morning? I'm preaching. I'm pre this morning I preached about uh, um, <laughs> you, you, you skip around. Huh? Romans 8 yeah, Romans 8 and 35 through 39 and it was um, uh, the power to save and the power to keep. The power to save and the power to keep. That's what it was about Sunday, this morning. Sunday morning you skip around different subjects. No, we were on that subject today. Yeah. I went to different places in the Bible, but I was on that subject. Right. That's Next week will be something else. Yeah, the, the ninth chapter. Yeah, I'll go on whatever subject's there. I will cover that subject and then go on from there. I might go different. Yeah, I'm in the book of Romans. All right, and that's on Sunday morning. So I'm staying busy. All right. The unclean spirits. Devils and demons, demons and devils. Kai, ace poru onte, ace kafarnaum, kai youthus, toys sabot sabasin, ace elthon, ace tain sinagogain, idadas game. All right, Cindy, tell me about this Kai. What is that thing? Conjunction. That's a conjunction. What page is it on, Sharon? <laughs> 208. <laughs> it's not written down. I just wrote it down. Somewhere. Okay. And then let's conjugate this here verb. Ace poru onte. Uh, Cindy, can you conjugate that for me? Third person plural, present indicative. All right. Third person plural. Present indicative active. It comes from ace. That's the front of it. And then poruamai. And this means go. This is this is parousia, kind of parousia. But parousia coming of Jesus Christ right here. This is where he comes for his church and all the same. That's that word comes from this root here. And they came in, or they entered into. They entered into a look at this ace. Look how he uses ace. Why does he use use ace so much, uh, Sharon? Why does this writer use ace? Huh? You don't know? <laughs> because it is the equivalent of this word right here in Hebrew. What is that? That's it. And and Mar Mark's writings have a lot of Hebrewisms in them and the Hebrew ideas. It's got a lot of Hebrew ideas. Not as much as the book of Revelation or John. John uses pure Hebrewisms, but Mark thinks in Hebrew. So he's bringing the Hebrew into the Greek. It's, it's, correct, it's correct grammar, but he, you keep seeing, you know where he's coming from in this. You know where he's coming from. He's thinking in Hebrew and writing in Greek. A lot of people say that this gospel was written in Aramaic to begin with. It wasn't written in Aramaic. It's written in Greek. But it has a lot of Hebrewisms in it. And they came in to visit. Ace, et, et, again, see, ace, Capharnaum. Now, you don't have to have ace before the Capharnaum right there at all. 
because we know where it's going because we got ace on the other word. But he is used to using the word et in Hebrew or Aramaic. And they came in and entered unto Capharnaum. That's Capharnaum. What does Capharnaum mean? You remember, Brother Mike? Marilyn, what does Capharnaum mean? Do you remember that one? Kafar means, yes, Sherry. Beloved, home. beloved covering or beloved home. Okay. Kai, Euthus. Look at that. And Euthus, remember, he uses this word a lot and he uses what tense? He's a master of what tense? Remember, Mark is a master of what tense? He uses this tense all the time. The imperfect tense. You're going to see a lot of imperfect tense. Because why? Because of the Hebrew action. He's, he's using Greek, but he's, he's, he's bringing the Hebrew action in to the Greek language. Extension or limitation of thought or verbal action, that ace there. Ace and ace, two aces and Capharnaum. Now, he's going to go through all the regions of Capharnaum, north, south, east, and west, Capharnaum. Of Capernaum. In every part, every particle of that city, he's going to go into. And immediately... Immediately, he began to teach on the Sabbaths. Euthus tois sabosun. Now, what does sabosun mean? You remember? Does any of you remember what that one means? Sabosun. Isn't that like a week? It's a week. It means a complete seven days. All right? The Sabbath. When, what day of the week is the Sabbath? Saturday. Saturday from Friday night to Saturday not evening, from 6 o'clock Friday to 6 o'clock Saturday. That is the Sabbath. Even though the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath to Sunday, this is what we call a Christian Sabbath, the Lord's Day. It is not the Sabbath. It is, Sabbath is still the same day. The Lord never changed the Sabbath. On the Sabbath, and they would always have their services on the Sabbath, wouldn't they? They wouldn't go to work. They would go to church. They would go to Sabbaton. A cell phone, and having entered, look at this word here. This is a second aorist, participle active, nominative singular masculine. Uh, having entered, having entered. Second aorist is a little more, it's punctiliary, but a little more durative linear. And having entered into the, into the synagogue, ace, tain, synagogue. And look at that word, ace, 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 all over the place. That's et. <coughs> now remember the perfect tense? Guess what he's going to do? Edas came. And this word comes from, from didasco if you want to write it down. That's the root of it, didasco. It is third person singular and perfect indicative active. And he kept on teaching in the synagogue. He kept on teaching. Kept on teaching, 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 teaching. How would you like to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him teach? Wouldn't that be something? Now we have the personality of Jesus manifested in the flesh. The person of God manifested in the flesh. Kai. Ex et le santo. Epi. Te didaske. Out to Ain Gar the Doscon Altois Altus Hos Exusion Ekon Kai Uk Hos Hoi Grametes. Now let's look at this action. And uh, they kept on being struck out of their senses. Have you ever been amazed? Has anything ever amazed you, Brother Mike? Yeah, yeah. yeah, amazed. Something just made you just couldn't believe what you saw. I, I when I think about that, I think of one thing in my life. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw. I was absolutely dumbstruck. Bigfoot. Yeah. Dumbstruck. 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 I was up there in uh, Mount Pinus when I was a little boy. My uncles took me hunting. 
And I was dumbstruck about a flash flood up there. I mean, water, it was dry the day before, dusty and everything. We drew, drove in there, and we got up there and rained on me all night long. And I had gone. I was working for $2.50 a day in a wrecking yard. And I was off at that time because Dale was off doing something else, so I wasn't with him. And my uncle took me up there hunting. And I went down and bought a sleeping bag at um, what was called... Uh, Army surplus down on California Avenue, and I had bought a rifle. I had a rifle. I had a 32 Winchester Special Model 94, and boy, I was hunting. I went up there, and it rained all night long until I was soaked. Finally, I got my sleeping bag. I mean, I was drowning out there on the flat ground. And I got in there, and I sat up all night long. And this, they had this Army Jeep with a tin roof on it. So I was in there all night long, and I was struck out of my senses all night long. Boy, I said, this is terrible. What's going to happen by morning? And by the morning, everything was underwater. There was rivers all over the place, rivers everywhere. I was struck out of my senses. Now, they're struck out of their senses. They keep on being struck out of their senses, and it's passive voice. See, it's happening to them. And then epi, that means upon, one page 153 and 54, if you want to write that one down. At the teaching, the doske, at the teaching, upon the teaching of him, belonging to him. That's genitive case, isn't it? And then look at that word ain. In RK ain hologos. Remember that one? At the teaching of him, that he kept on, he kept on being, for he kept on being, for it kept on being the teaching of them as exousion. You remember what exousion means, Sharon? You tell me about that one. Um, the ultimate authority. Unlimited authority. It means out of it, doesn't it? That's literally what it means, out of it. No limits. Unlimited authority. Had his unlimited authority having and not as the grammates. Grammates. Tell me about the word grammates, Cindy. Uh, let's see. Grammates. Uh, third declension. Mm-hmm. It's a third declension word. I had to do all this back when I was doing this. I had to because when I read this in my class, I had to tell them all about it. I was demanded what declension, whatever. I didn't write down the page numbers yet. You see that. I'd memorize that later. Now, they quoted the rabbis and the, grand, and the scribes. They quoted other people, didn't they? They didn't say, I said this. They quoted other people. A lot of people quote me. I had a pastor come to my house the other day, and, and he, was after, he stayed after, a, after the class. He said, how many times you were, you were Texas Baptist Institute in Texas? I said, well, I don't think I was ever there. He said, they quote you all the time in that school. I said, they do? Yeah. He said, you must have been all over Texas. I said, I preached three or four times in Texas in my life. But they were quoting me because of Greek and Hebrew. And <clears throat> now, the scribes are quoting all of these rabbis in the Mishnah and the Talmud. Jesus is saying, this is the way it is. This is it. It's not who said what, Maimonides, or whoever said this. It's what I say. And this is what I said in my word. He's straightening them out on the translations, too. He's not teaching as a scribe. The word grammar comes from this grammato. These were the, the grammarians of the day. The scribes were the county clerks in each synagogue. Every, every transaction of business was written down by these scribes. They wrote it down, and you had to build a sale for pots, for a daughter, whatever you sold, you you had a bill of sale for it. every marriage, every divorce. The scribes wrote it down. They wrote it down. So they were called the grammarians, the county clerks of the day. When you get married or get divorced or whatever you do, you go down here to a county clerk. They want you to do that, you know, keep control and track of you. This is what you call the manipulation of the masses. It started back when. 
in Catholicism in the fourth and the fifth, third, fourth and fifth centuries. 123, Chi, <coughs> Euthus. See that word? Now look at here, imperfect indicative active again. Ain, an, te, synagogue, auton, anthropos, in, numate, akartharto, chi, ano, krasgen, and immediately again. We, we, he loves to use this word immediately. Things happen when Jesus spoke. Boom! Immediately. And immediately there kept on being in the synagogue of them uh, anthropos, a man. This man kept on being there. Now, what's the subject, Brother, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Cindy? What's the subject? Uh -huh, what's the subject here? What's the nominative singular masculine of this sentence? Man is. So he kept on being in the, in the synagogue, didn't he? And then we have in spirit, unclean, not clean. And it cried out. Ah! That's what it did. He cried out. But by the way, one of the times when the demons cried out is eaw, eaw, eaw. That's what they would cry out. Eaw. And so this spirit in this man cries out. Now, he cries out. The spirit does. And immediately there kept on being in the synagogue of them a man in spirit. He's controlled. He's absolutely uh, controlled by the spirit of Mantuamene. So when the spirit takes over, he has no control of what he's doing. And this is what we call mantic ap manic or manic episodes we get from this word, where it comes from. When you have a manic episode, that's where you're out of control. So now he was out of control under the control of the master of spiritual darkness, Scotia Sophon, thick darkness. Now, this man felt the darkness in his sight, his smell, his taste, his feeling, his hearing, everything. He felt this darkness. He felt it. He was absolutely immersed in evil. This man is immersed in evil. He was overcome with evil. Legon, T, Himen, Kai, C, Asus, Nazarene, Elthes, Apolese, Hemas, Oida, C, T, A, Ho, Hagios, Tooth, You. <coughs> now tell me about this uh, Legon there, Cindy. All right. Nominative singular masculine, present participle active, and it comes from Lego. If you want to write that down, that's the root of it. Lego. I didn't write that down back then. I do that now. <coughs> this is when I just began writing. Saying. He's saying. Who? What? To us. Now look at that. How many of them were there in this man? What to us? Him in. What? There's more than one, so there's at least two. Maybe there's three, four, five, six, seven, maybe a thousand. Maybe two thousand as it was in Legion. Now this guy evidently was sane enough to go into the synagogue because if he if he was insane, if he was demons possessed, they would not let him walk in the synagogue. But remember that synagogues were not a building. They were a portico and outside there were there were maybe well rocks to set on or just set on the ground out there and inside they had seats in the synagogue inside but it was an open air situation so maybe this guy is outside there if he's if he's mentally ill if he's demon possessed they're not going to let him walk inside of that synagogue so either he was sometimes okay or he was on the outside saying what to us and to you, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Westcott and Hort 
say this is a, uh, a declarative statement, a statement instead of a question. We have it as an interrogative here. I think Westcott and Horton is probably more, it actually was a statement. What to you and what to us, Jesus of Nazareth? That's a declaration. Okay? You have come to destroy us. Is Jesus going to destroy all of these people one of these days? They got the eschatology just a little bit wrong here, didn't they? At the first time when Jesus Christ came as a Savior of the world and God's Son in obedience to the will of the triune God, he was subject to the powers of this world to some extent. Did he eat? Did he live? Was he really human? Yes. Okay? But he was a master that created the universe. Okay? He was a master that created the universe. What to you, uh, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, uh, Jesus is going to be raised in Nazareth. It said that Jehovah would come out of root, out of the root out of dry ground. That's Nazareth. Near Nazareth was a rabbi school. And remember, one guy said, Can anything good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, the Messiah would come out of Nazareth. You have come to destroy. Look at that word. Second person singular, second aorist, indicative actor. You have come to destroy, to loose us from loose us, tear us down. First aorist, infinitive active. Jesus Christ is going to put all of these demons. Look over here on the map. We have seven years of tribulation there, but during at the end of that tribulation period, all of the demons and all of these unclean spirits are going to be put and kept in the bottomless pit of gloom. For how long, Cindy? Kilia Ater. One thousand years. One thousand year reign and there won't be one single influence of Satan on the earth. The only problem problems we're going to have right then is the damage. We're bad enough by ourselves, are we not? We bad enough by ourselves? Yeah, we got an Adam's nature in us, don't we? Then they're turned back loose at the end of that period, and we have what was called what battle? Gog and Magog, the battle of Gog and Magog, and then the Lord zaps them, and then they go to the lake of fire forever, and there's where they're up loose, destroyed, and put away permanently. Well, to destroy us. Two times the Lord, he puts them in this bottomless pit. Then he lets the devil go out, Revelation 27 through 9, and he comes up and he gets this insurrection against the Lord. And it won't last very long. God's going to zap him and put him in there. And then he's going to put all the people that is resurrected. Now, now here's the resurrection of the great white zone judgment. And they're all, one at a time, judged and thrown into the lake of fire, eternal hell fire, and there's various degrees in this lake of fire. He said, uh, We know, we understand, Oida, we understand you. You are the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. There's nothing unholy about Jesus, is there? 125. Kai. Epite Mason. Auto. Ho. Asus. Legon. Timo. Thete. Kai. X. Elthe. By the way, it's got an immovable new on the end of that. It's not there, so it's removed. That's what we call a movable new. X. Auto. And he strongly rebuked. Third person singing the first air is indicative active. He strongly rebuked, reprimanded, reproved him. See an epi on the front of that? That means it's compound, it's intensified. He strongly rebuked, reprimanded, corrected him to him. The Jesus saying, now in a singular imagine present participle active saying, shut up. 
told him shut up. Shut up. You shut up. That's an imperative, a command. Second person singular, first error. It's imperative, passive. And you come out. And you come out. And stay out of him. Come out and stay out. Now, the word ex out to there is actually in brackets, so it wasn't there, but it's understood in the language, okay? You come out and stay out of him. 126. Kai, sparaxon, auton, to numa, to akarthon, kai, phonason, phone, megale, xl thing, X alto. Now here we have X alto there, and it's really in the text. And having ripped and distorted in, in, in spasms and convulsions, him, Spra rocks on. This man went into a seizure, and this, this thing, these things literally ripped him apart. Sometimes, if you have a terrible experience, your stomach will just twist up. It'll just twist up. You can just feel your colon and your guts just moving like a snake in you. That's, that's that. But this man's whole body was like that in convulsions. Having torn him and ripped him and convulsed and spasms him, the spirit, the spirit did it. The spirit, now, spirits are not material, are they? Not material, but they seek what? to dwell in human or animal flesh. The unclean spirit, the akarthoton, akatharton, the unclean spirit. The word kathy, the word katharizo comes from this word right here. Kathleen, Catherine are all from this word. And it screamed and roared, having screamed and roared, Phonason, having screamed and roared in a voice, in a voice or with a voice, megale, megale, megale. That's what you go mega size something when you go to McDonald's, you mega size it. This is big right here. This is the word gadol in Greek, large, big, gigantic, or Hebrew that is. And he came out. Third person singular, second aorist, indicative, active. Out, out of him. Now that word ea that I said before, the scream of the demon, and we find that in different places, that is an onomatopoeic word. Onomatopoeic. Cindy, you know what onomatopoeic means? You remember that? A word that is a natural feeling, something, oh! That's what it is. Oh! You smash your finger and oh! When you, you cry, that's an automatic peg. Crying and wailing is an automatic peg. You can cry and wail. It doesn't matter what language you're in. It's, it's universal. Marilyn, can you read that first word over here in verse number 27? Oh, boy! The next one's not quite so easy. Etham Besethason. Apontes. Apontes. Hoste. Sinzetain. Autos. Legontas. Tiestin. Tuto. Didaske. Kaine. Kat. Exusion. Kai tois numasi. Tois akathar. Tois, epitase, kai, hippo akusen auto. <coughs> and uh, they kept on being, they, they trembled greatly with great fear. Now here's the word. Have you ever been so afraid that you trembled? That you just shook, your knees shook together? I remember one time when this happened to me, there's a guy fell out of the derrick. 
I was working on a drilling rig. He fell out of a derrick. He's a great big man out of Texas, and he wasn't used to these these fast moving California rigs. And he got up there, and he got his hand caught in the in the uh, the elevators on the rig, and it pulled him out, and then dropped him. And he was hanging down there, and he had fainted and passed out. And he guys weighs about 300 pounds, and he's hanging down underneath the monkey board. Here's a drilling rig like this. And this is a full view Idaho, and there's nothing in here. And out here is a monkey board like this. Well, it's actually very thin, with slots in it. And he's out here, and the blocks are coming down, and he's hanging down underneath this thing on a safety belt, passed out. They said, go up and get him. Where? How are we going to get out there in the middle of this derrick when you don't have anything to hang on to and get this guy that may die any minute? If the belt broke or whatever, the rope broke or something, he could be dead. We went up there and everybody's knees were just shaking together. All, they're all just like this, trembling all over the place. And we're shaking all over because this guy's life is in our hands. We're getting out. We rope him. We pull him over the side and we get a hold of this guy and we put a, a, a the... We take the sand line. Then we have to take him loose from up there. We had to cut the line and still keep him without losing him and get him down there and then call the ambulance. To oh, get him. Right. He was like 70 feet. And everything down below is steel. And puncture you. It'll puncture you while you fall. This is it. And we're up there, just all of us shaking and trembling all over, just terrorized by this. He wouldn't go back in the Derrick. I became the Derrick man. And the Derrick, the driller tried to kill me <laughs> later on. And they were trembling all over. They greatly trembled. There were calls to tremble. Absolutely all so as to, to uh, deliberate, to argue, to reason, to dispute, to debate them saying, what is this thing, this teaching new? Kine, that means brand new. Hey, Kine, do you think he is what? The New Testament, this new teaching. They hadn't heard anything like this before. According to authority, unlimited power. Unlimited power. Exousia. Instrumental singular feminine. First declension. To use force or powers, if necessary, unlimited powers to do something. This authority... And the spirits, the unclean, he lords over. He lords over them. Because he's the master of heaven and hell, isn't he? He's the, the devil isn't the master of hell. Jesus is. And he commands and he orders. And they under here. <clears throat> Look at that word. He pull and a cool there. They obey him. They obey him. They obey him. 128. The master of heaven and hell. The master over the, all the demons and the devils, so to speak. Kai. Exelthane. He akue. Autu youthus. Pontox. Pontoxo. Ace. Holane. Tain. Peri. Pericoron. Taste Galileos. And it went out. Now let me ask you something. What do we know about spirits? Evil spirits. Demon spirits. Brother Mike, what do we know about demon spirits? They need, need I don't know if it needs or have to, but live in... They life. seek to dwell in human or animal flesh. Okay? They're eternal. They are, they are, they, they don't, they don't forget. They last forever. Marilyn, what about else about them? What else about demon spirits? They are what? Immoral. They're immoral, yeah. What else about demon spirits, Marilyn? They are what? Well, they like to be territorial. They're territorial. They like to stay in the same area. So, even though they're cast out, then they seek someplace else to go some other animal or human flesh to dwell in. 
So now they went out. They went out the announcement, <coughs> the herald of him, immediately. Look at that word immediately. Over and over and over he uses this. This guy is real redundant with these words, but he uses them for emphasis. In all places and every place and every play, in every side. All sides and every play. Ace, again, like et in Hebrew. Ace, holon, the entire, the perikoron. That means peri, which means around, and in the inhabited region. Now, what's here in Galilee? How many cities are in Galilee? About ten cities, and there are about 1,500 people in each city. There was 150,000 people here that heard this. Okay? 150,000 people have heard what Jesus did here. Now, this was done. What did they call this place? Remember the name? The, 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 there is an actual name. This is called the roadway to the world right here. And the, all roads went through Galilee. So now the whole known world has heard about Jesus, all the way down to Egypt, all the way through Europe, all the way to Rome. What is the word for Latin? Uh, Sharon, do you remember the, that word? Romasti. Romasti. All the way to, the, to Rome. All the way to Rome. Through this 150,000 people that live in this area. <coughs> 129. Maryland, how does this sentence start off right here? Can you read these first three words, four words? Euthus. All right. Sharon, what's the next one? Synagogues. Exelthontes. Elthon. Ace. Tain Oikion, Simonas, Kai, Andreu, Meta, Yekabu, Kai, Iwanu. <coughs> and immediately, again, we have this word immediately, the action of the Hebrew brought into Greek. And immediately, out of the synagogue. Now, what does the word synagogue mean? The place of going together. The place of going together. It's the place. This is the place of going together. All right? The place of going together. A place. That's the synagogue. Now, that's called a moed in Hebrew. I'll just write it out here. Moed in Hebrew. That's a place of going together. Now, see, the Jews weren't using their language, so they called their place of, of going together, they called it not Moeds, but synagogues. Okay? Synagogues. And then we have the word, the assembly is called the word kahal in Hebrew. I don't know how to spell it in English. <laughs> I just leave it in Hebrew. <laughs> Something like this. Uh... Like that. that is the assembly. And of course in Greek it's ecclesia. Right here we're talking about the place of the gathering together. Not the group. Not the assembly. Not the people. And immediately out of the synagogue having gone forth <coughs> having gone forth they having come they have come unto the Oikion, oikos. That actually means dome. That means a, a lid over you, a shelter, the sheltered place, the domed place. Of Simonas. What is Simonas? What is this word in Hebrew? Simeon. Simeon. What does Simeon mean? One who hears, or God heard. And Andrew. Andrew, Andreu, Andreu. What does Andreu mean? You remember what that one means? Marilyn, Andreu, Andreu. Comes from Anthropos. It means manly. Manly. Manly or man. With James. That's Jacob in Hebrew. Yakabu, Yakabu in Hebrew. With James. And John, Iwane. <coughs> now Jacob means to follow the hill and then uh, John means what? 
dove. What's the book of John in the Old Testament? What's the Old Testament book of John? Jonah. Jonah, thank you very much. One in verse 30. The Catholic Church probably would have trouble with this if they read their Bible. Hey, day, panthera. Simonos, kara ek, kara ek keto, peru susa, kai, euthus, lagusen, auto, peri, altes. <coughs> it starts out, and, or moreover, the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law. The wife's mother. Okay, the wife's mother, the mother of the wife of Simon, Simona. Uh, she was laid out. She kept on being laid out. Third person singular, imperfect, indicative, active. She kept on being laid out. What does that mean? She's flat out, laid down. Flat out, laid down. In other words, can't get up. She can't get up. And they say, they uh, to continue to say, to him concerning her. They're continuing to talk about her concerning her. Him, to him concerning her. The word peri, by the way, is kerica in Latin. Kerica, which we get our word circle from. That means around, about her. 131. And? Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Thank you, Cindy. Kai? I'm translating in my head. Pros <laughs> elton. Egerain. Alte. Kratesos. Tes keros. Kai. Afeken. Altain. Ho. Puretos. Kai. Da. Kone. Altois. And having approached, nominate singular masculine, present, or participle aorist, second aorist, indicative. All right? Having approached, and having approached basically her, because see the her is over there. On down, outtain, that's her. That's third person feminine, third person uh, pronoun, accusative singular feminine. Having approached her, then you go back up again, Ray, he raised her. He raised her. He grasped her and grasped and held on to her. Having grasped and, and holding on to her and held on to her forcefully, he apprehended, he grasped, he arrested her. He picked her up. The hand. And he left behind. Third person singular, first terrorist indicative act. He left behind her the fever, the fire. The fire left her. Have you ever had a fever? Yeah. A fever. That's rough. A fever is really, this tears you up, doesn't it? When I was about 14 years old, I had pneumonia. And I was working at 3031 Edison Highway at a gas station there. It was a Texaco station, no, a Hancock station at that time. I went out there, and I reached over to wash this guy's windshield, and I fell on the ground and passed out with pain. They called uh, uh, somebody to come and get me. They took me to the hospital. They thought I had appendicitis attack and found out that I had double pneumonia. I had reached, and my lungs hurt so bad, the pneumonia did, that I just passed out in this Culked over, and I had a tremendous fever, and I had that fever for days and days and days. I just laid and sweated and just in this fever, that fire. She could have had pneumonia. I don't know what was wrong with her. We don't say what she had. She could have had some virus, some virus, and and all of this virus and bacteria are all hot. Fallen life forms. They're detrimental to our health because they're fallen life forms taking residence, they're what we call parasites. Cancer is a parasite, and it kills its host. 
and these things will kill the host. When did they become that? I, I'm curious to know about that. Stuff. I don't know exactly. I don't know when this happened. Maybe in the garden after they sinned. These fallen life forms, these fallen bacteria, all the bacteria and the life forms before that were what? All in order. They were all going in the same way. They're all marching together. Now all of this stuff is fighting us because of sin. This fire, piretos, the word piri. Uh, Brother Mike, you ever play marbles? Yeah. Cindy, you played Mark Peary, something you could see through. It looked like fire. It was yellow and red. These are red and yellow Peary's. This fire in them. That's what the word Peary means. Kathy and I still have our marbles from when we were kids. Yeah, I've got some of them too. Some of the Peary's and some of the... Thanks to our parents. Same yeah. for us. No, the fire. This noxious heat that is in the body. The body is trying to fight off this terrible virus. Now, they think, some of the doctors say, is to take a person and cover them up and keep the fever as high as you can because the fever will kill what virus is in there. That's what your body is doing, trying to fight it off. Okay? And she kept on uh, waiting. She kept on deaconing. Do you see that word? That's the word deacon right there. She kept on waiting on them. She kept on, she was stirring up dust, literally. That's what it literally said. She kept on stirring up dust. She was moving around all the time. When we got home today, Marilyn wanted to go to work. She said, where's uh, an extension cord? I want to go out there and stir up a little dust and go sand all this stuff down and, and get ready to paint this stuff. And I said, go in there and lay down. <laughs> then when you lay down, I couldn't get her up. <laughs> She kept on deaconing and attending to them. Third person singular and perfect and dictative active to them or after them. Kept waiting on them. Now, Jesus, do you see a lot of miracles here? Do you see Jesus' power over the, for the dark world? The demons and the devils as we call them. Now, if you look up your little page up there, it says, it says in 10, 14, 75 or 73 whatever that is up there. Opsios Dei Ganomenes Hote Edison Ho Helios Epheron Pros Alton Pontus Tus Kakos Ekontes Kai Tus Daimonizomenus. This is a lot of action in this sentence also. I want you to look at the action. Mark is a brief gospel. It's like a concentrated uh, Reader's Digest form of the gospels. He just says one thing after it, goes on to the next thing, and says immediately this and that and all of this. He just goes from one subject to the other. And if you look in the other Gospels, there's a more elongated, described what happened. But here he's just putting it all down in short form. If you want to read the short Gospel, this is the one. This is abbreviated. You can tell everything that Jesus did, but it's just, he did it. Go on to the next subject. And then what we have here, This is what we call the ninth hour. This is sunset. This is sunset. And sunset having come. That's the entity singular feminine present or participle second hour is participle having come. And sunset having come. And then we have a little when. That little hote is a conjunction of time when. And he had set, he had set, third person singular, first Harrison and Dickney back, he had set the sun. The sun he had set. What's the subject there, Cindy? Ho Helios. That's the sun. The sun. This sun, it, it, he did set. He set. How do we know that sun is a he? Ho Helios. All right. Ho is a definite article. It's a nominative singular, masculine, definite. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Ho Helios. Ho Helios. That's the sun. Ephron. 
okay? He uh, kept on bringing, or he kept on bringing toward him all who did this. Who's this he? Some representative of his little ecclesia, of his church. Maybe the master of arms or the, the deacon, whoever. Toward him all the ones, look at that word, kakos. That's with ailments, physical, wretched, miserable plagues of some sort. These fallen life forms that are plaguing these people. They're having these uh, physical ailments. Having and the ones, look at that being demon-possessed, being demon-possessed. If you got Merrill F. Unger's Demons of the World today, look on page 44 and 45, and, and you can read a lot about this. I was going to bring this with me tonight, the demons, the demon-possessed people. <laughs> Merrill F. Unger's Demons of the World Today. Is that where you found out about their, their, their territorial-like? Or is that in the it tells life? a lot about that. Of course, I've already told you a lot of that already. Is that in the Bible somewhere about the uh, being territorial? Yeah, in the regions. The demons, when they when Jesus cast them out of the, de out the demons out of the, what we call the de Gadarene demoniac, they grabbed the first. They went. They said, "Can we go into?" They didn't want to leave the area. They didn't want to leave. They are here, and so they wanted to go into the swine. And the swine jumped, and they had better sense than the guy. They jumped in the in the Sea of Galilee and drowned themselves. I thought that was just the closest thing they could get. Yeah, that's it. They didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave the area, so they did that. When a demon goes out of somebody, it goes into somebody else. When somebody dies with demons, the demons hang around. That's where you have haunted houses. Okay? They're not, they're not ghosts there, but the demons that inhabited the person that died. Because when they die, they have no more use to the flesh, do they? The flesh is dead. Can't carry them around any place. So the demons stay there and pester people. That's what we call poltergeist. They're not ghosts. They are demon spirits. What, are, what is their purpose? I mean, what is their purpose? When What's they, the purpose of when all dwelling <coughs> evil? Right when they're in dwelling. Yeah. The what did they do? What did demons do? What uh, did Satan do? Terror, he causes terror, confusion. Jesus called out his church. So what did Satan do? He called out hundreds and all flavors of the truth and everything, all different stages, from way out there to almost close, all different flavors to carry people away from the truth, to confuse people. So what do demons do? They're they like call... evangelists. Huh? They're like, eva They're like Satan's evangelists, yes. They cause confusion. They spread the, they their, spread the terror faith. and the problems all over. Okay. Kai, Ain, Holain, or hole that is, hey police, epi synagoge yes, no, epi synagene pros tain theron. Yes. Oh, okay. And it kept on being the entire the city. Hey police, what is that? What gender is the city? Uh, female. Female. All right. See, we got girls and boys all over the place. See? Feminine, masculine. And the city is feminine, isn't it? And the whole entire city, having come together. Look at that word now. Here we have the word synagogue there. But here we use it as a verb. They've come together. Of epi, they come upon one place, toward the door. The door of what? Simon's mother. They're, they're there now. Their whole city, that's 150,000 people from our regions and maybe 15,000 from this city. There they are at the door crowding around. <coughs> Let's do one more verse here. Kai Ethara Pusin Polus Kakos Ekontes Poi kilias, kilias that is, uh, no sois, 
Kai Daimonia Paula XL Balain Kai Uk Afian Lalain Ta Daimonia Hote Ed De Son Alton And he had here's the word therapy for this. This is the word therapy. See that word therapy in there? Sharon? Therapy. And he uh, he healed. Therapy is supposed to heal you. And he healed many, many much ill, physical ailments. Having all kinds of colors and varieties. That's what the word poikilias. Diverse colors and varieties of sicknesses and diseases. And uh, demons, devils, many he cast he had cast out. He had cast out and not he kept on allowing. He kept on refusing to speak. He did not let them speak, these other demons. Now demons can they speak through a person? Yes. They do. They use the person as an instrument to speak. I think I've heard it before. Not talking to me, but talk, talking at, well, maybe talking to me out of someone else's body. Well, I, I, I'll never forget this when Raymond, so many years ago, he t started telling me about things that he did. He was into drugs, all kinds of drugs, anything. Whatever he could make, get to make him feel different than normal, he took it. And he took this one real bad drug. And he was at home. He was married at that time. And these demons were coming after him. These devils were coming after him. And he called his mother and said, Come and get me, come and get me. And she came and got him. And he saw the demons rushing after her car and said, Go faster, go faster, go faster. He was seeing demons. They really are there. They were really there. Demons work with drugs and alcohol. Demons work with drugs and alcohol. They do. You know when people go into the DTs, that's what they call DTs, and they see things, and they're imagining things? I remember one of my uncles one time, the father of my student here. She, uh, Her father was over at my house, and he was trying to come down off of drinking. He'd, he'd been drunk for 20 years, drunk Indian. He looked just like Sam Paul. Looked just like Sam Paul. This is his grandson. And he was out there in my yard. He was out there helping me uh, chop wood. And all of a sudden, he just started screaming, screaming. And he said, they're eating me up, they're eating me up. And he was rolling around, and, uh, and we had a little bit of a lawn out there. He was running around, and he was, he's taking, going like this, get him off of me, get him off of me, get him off of me. Give him something to drink. You can kill him, right? That can kill you. The worms were eating like the worms of hell. He saw these pieces of grass on him, and it was maggots and worms trying to eat his flesh. He was just screaming in terror. Screaming in terror. He had healed many much illnesses, having diverse, many-sided, many-colored sicknesses. Demons and devils, many, he had cast out, and not did he allow to speak the demons because they understood completely him. They understood who he was. You know, you get lost people out in the world. You try to deal with lost people, Brother Mike. I, I know you've got people that you want to be saved that, that, that are sinners and, and died in the wool sinners. And you try to reach these people. Good people. They're good people, and you're trying to reach them, but the demons know more about God than they do. You don't have to evangelize a demon. You don't have to tell them who Jesus is. They know who Jesus is. But lost people don't want to. And guess who's blocking their minds? These real demons are blocking their minds. We went through 121 through 34, didn't we? Got any questions? Spooky, isn't it? A 
story was uh, demons and devils. That's what we're talking about tonight, yes. Okay, and Jesus is casting out all these demons from all these people. That means they're... Seeking someplace else to go. Yeah, they're just like releasing a pack of wild dogs. Yes. They have to go as far as they can go so they can find somebody dumb enough There's people. I mean, if one person gets saved, really gets saved, if they get saved down off the streets, and those demons really leave them, they got somebody right there ready to go to. Here's a good house right over here. What? Don't you have to be gullible or or kind of allow them in? Yeah. Willingly. I mean, they can't just force their way into somebody without. I don't know all I know about that, Brother Mike. I mean, you know, you play with Ouija boards or you're going There's to a way to get in trouble. Don't go play with trouble. I mean, then you're using your, or do drugs. Yeah. Like LSD. You go taking drugs. You go take alcohol and to, to excess. You do all of these things, and you're opening the door to demons. In then if one of them's running around looking for a place. They're looking for a place. Yeah. There's this old song, looking for a place, looking for a place. But they can come and oppress you. They can still wander around and oppress you. That might have been one of Paul's thorn in the flesh, I heard somebody once said. I don't know what I don't know what it was, just like everybody else. I console myself in my ignorance. <laughs> I don't know what it was. All right. Any other questions? I don't I'm here. See, I'm still at Valley Baptist Church once a week. Yes, Sharon. Okay, so, I mean, today we are too sophisticated to talk about demons and illnesses and mental illnesses. Yes. We call, we have other names for it. Yes. So how much of that is demonic? Uh, that I can't tell you either, but I think a lot of it is demonic because people have allowed themselves to be used like that. Sharon. Um, illnesses. Oh. Mental illnesses yeah. and things. I, I can just tell you this. I have known two or three borderline personality disorders in my life, and that's a bad person. That's like Hitler and uh, Charles Manson and people like that. These are real bad people. Uh, they're, they're, it's got all of that in there. It's got all of it. Schizophrenic, everything. Manic depression, all of this is there, except they're very powerful and very convincing people. And I don't believe... I believe if those people got saved that they could totally change their life. I believe God would give them the power to, 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 to get saved okay, and, and to get rid of all this. But it's there so many times in people's lives. And it stays in our life. People, people that have mental disorders and what we call personality disorders, a lot of it is demonic. And self-gratification in all of it, isn't it? This is what we call narcissism. All of this. We see all of this. It's real, isn't it? Do, you, do, do any of us not know somebody like this? <laughs> Does anybody not know some of this? Somebody like this? That use people up and that this cause havoc? What does Satan do? Causes havoc. Havoc in everything. What? Yeah, seeking who he may destroy and devour. That's what it is. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Go out and do something. Turn. If you're finished with this, I, this is a big subject. This is a subject that I cannot teach in one hour or or a hundred hours. I taught for a whole year what we call pneumatology and demonology in the seminary. So this is just one. Cindy, can you dismiss us in prayer, please? Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together again. And I just pray that you would be with us, take us um, home safely.